Today, I'm going to be talking about JavaScript object notation, otherwise known as JSON. Uh, JSON is a data format that is commonly used in REST APIs that usually sit in front of databases uh, on the internet. So when you're trying to uh, get um, data from some service over the internet, it's usually through a REST API. And the most common format used to return data from that API is JSON. So in Python, uh, the most common way to interact with the REST API is the request library, which comes with support for parsing JSON. So we're going to take a look at that, and we're also going to take a look at the standard JSON library to see uh, how we can do uh, some additional functionality with JSON uh, to make our lives easier. So let's get started. So what I did was I searched on the internet for a public API that was free that return JSON and I got this really cool list on GitHub of, of public APIs. In here I searched uh, for, well I didn't search for, but I found one related to songs uh, called Searchly and it says it supports similarities search based on song lyrics. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I came over here to the documentation and uh, I took a look at this bit of code here. I'm going to start a new uh, PyCharm project and PyCharm is pretty awesome because it automatically creates a virtual environment which is uh, what you need to separate your dependencies your libraries that you install or your packages that you install when you're uh, executing Python code so that way um, you can take that code and move it to a different machine without any issues um, so it created this Python project folder and you can see it has this bit of code here um, in order to run that, um, there's a couple different ways we could do it. We could say Python 3 and run it like that, and it'll say hi PyCharm. However, um, I like to run my Python with just a dot forward slash. This fails though, because it says permission denied. So you have to do a change mod and give it execution permissions. And then you'll notice my terminal made it red now. And now when I run it, error. Why did that happen? So that happened because by default, the uh, shell, uh, bash or, or ZSH in this case, is going to try to interpret the Python code itself as like, ba as like bash shell, shell scripting. It's like, no, that's not going to work. So what you have to do is you have to go into your Python file, come up here to the top of the file, and you have to tell it user bin environment Python 3 to use the Python 3 interpreter. So now when I run it, boom, hi PyCharm. So that works as expected. That's what we want. However, this is not the code we want. So I'm going to delete that out. And again, I'm going to grab this uh, code over here if it's not in my clipboard and paste it. Perfect. So now, you notice right away my editor tells me, hey, request is not installed. Before I install requests, I should source this virtual environment in here. Oops. That was created by PyCharm. And this is how we do that. VM bin activate. <clears throat> there you go. And you'll notice my uh, shell tells me, hey, you're now inside this virtual environment. So now we need to do a pip install requests to install the requests library. Okay, that installed. Now that that's installed, I should be able to run this uh, code over here and get no errors. Let's see. Cool. So that runs without errors. It also isn't doing anything. So what we want to do is just like in the documentation, well, first I should explain. There's a URL for the, the part of the API we're going to hit. And then there's a payload that we're going to send the API. And so query uh, is going to be Cyrus for Miley Cyrus, which follows the documentation example. And then here we're capturing the response. We're saying request.get this URL past the parameters, this payload. Okay. And then it says the response is formatted in JSON response, uh, JSON response equals response.json. So this response.json takes what the API or what the URL returns and loads it into a dictionary. <clears throat> And we're going to see that. We're going to print out the JSON response. Okay, so now when I run this, dot slash main.py, boom, wall of text. But you can see in here you're getting some, some uh, songs about from Miley Cyrus. So um, that's not very helpful to look at, and that's typically the first thing you're going to see when you deal with an API is like you get some wall of text response, and you're like, that is, that is not helpful. So how can we you know, start working with this data a little better. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to import 
<clears throat> JSON at the top and then take that response and we actually have to, to reconvert this to JSON. And I'll show you how we do that. So we take the response and we say, I want to print out um, JSON dumps <clears throat> the JSON response. Okay. And I'm just going to comment this out for a second, the old one. So now I'm going to rerun that. And now it's printing out valid JSON. Well, what's the difference? The difference is this. The key in the valid JSON has double quotes. If I go back, comment this out, and comment this back in, where we're just printing out the dictionary, you'll see that the key has single quotes around it. Why does that matter? Why do, why do I care about having valid JSON right now? Well, here's why. There's a trick that I love, which is to use something called JSON tool to pretty print the, pi the JSON response. So if I try that right now, it's going to fail. And it says, expecting property name enclosed in double quotes. So, uh, <laughs> shocking, um, since I was just like telling you about this. So now, again, if I, if, I JSON, if I do a JSON dumps, that sort of like serializes the data to be the correct format, um, and you load this dictionary JSON response, and now it's going to print the correct format, and then I'm piping that output, that's what the pipe here does, to Python dash M JSON tool. And by doing that, look what happens. Boom. Very pretty sort of hierarchical structure here of the JSON data. It's tabbing and doing all kinds of great things. So I'm scrolling up now because we need to sort of like understand what the JSON response is so we can parse through it. So for example, there's an error key. So typically when you interact with an API, you're like, was there an error? So you'd say, if, you know, JSON response key equals error, true, if there was an error, then do something with that error. Um, but in this case, we know there's not an error because we could see that it successfully pulled some response results. So what we do want to do though, is now that we kind of have an understanding of that data structure, we want to kind of pull out the songs themselves. So we're going to say four songs in, and what do we got to do here? So from this top level dict dictionary, um, we're going to pull out the response key. So we're going to say JSON response, and the key we want is response. You can use sub, uh, single or double quotes here, it doesn't matter, and just to prove a point, I'll do it. And then we're going to want results. So the next key, right? And then you'll notice that that key is a, is a list. See that? That indicates that it's a list. So that's why I'm doing a loop here for songs. And actually, um, technically, I'm going to get a song at a time, so I should do for song, right? Because inside of this list, we get one of these objects per iteration. We're looping through where that comma is. And so we're saying, boom, for each song, you have an ID and a name. So now in here, we could say print song ID, comma, song, whoops, shoot, name. Okay, let's run that and see if it works. We don't want to run it with the Python dash M JSON tool. We just want to run the regular old code now. So, boom. So now we get a printout of IDs and the artist name and song name, which is included in the, in the full name response. So now, just to do something a little cooler, we could say if song ID is greater than, um, let's take this one, the ID of um, 68,680 printed out. Let's see what we get. All right, here we go. We got four responses. And I'm really sorry for that little bit right there. Not sure how that got in there. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> we love you, Miley. Um, so uh, the, the thing I want to point out here, though, is that this is an integer, right? It, I'm not quoting this in any way. So that's kind of what indicates to my interpreter that it's an integer. And you can see it's highlighting it there in blue. And then I'm saying greater than. Uh, this response over here, or rather this response is greater than this number over here. And um, 
That's really important because Python is doing something here that's kind of interesting. It's uh, it's using its duck typing, which is to say like it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's a duck, uh, to say, hey, you're trying to use this this actual string, because this is technically a string, not an integer that's being returned from this API, because if you look at the response, I am lying to you right now. I thought it had quotes on it. Okay, love it when I make mistakes. That's what makes these videos fun. But anyway, it, it actually has, it actually is an integer that's returned there, because they're not quoting it in any way. Um, but I just wanted to prove a point, like, so let me prove that point real quick, because I think it's an important lesson. If I did quote, oh God, I can't do that, sorry. <laughs> If I put this as a string, if I typecast it to a string, and I try to compare it to this integer, uh, it's gonna fail. And actually, you can see my interpreter is actually already telling me that. So you get type error. Uh, comparison operator is not supported between instances of string and int, right? Um, but uh, I could like make that a string. Let's see if that works. I think this will fail too. <laughs> oh, wow, that works. You could actually compare with strings. I didn't, I wasn't sure about that. Because, you know, generally speaking, you wouldn't want to compare numbers as strings. Uh, you would want the integers to be compared, which is what's happening here. And that works out, whoops, just fine. Whoopsie. As we showed before. So um, the other thing I wanted to show is, like, if, you know, it, just to get freaking crazy, make this a string. Oh, actually, let's do it the other way. Let's make it a string like this. Okay, so now that's a string, right? This should fail with the type error, right? But now I can like retypecast it into an integer. And voila, that works. Now, this is one of the things I love about Python, but this is one of the things that drive other programmers absolutely insane who are used to typed languages or strongly typed languages. So uh, that's as far as I'm going to go in this video. Uh, but I hope this was super helpful for you for uh, JavaScript object notation. And I hope the nugget about duck typing was also helpful. Uh, see you in the next video.